Okay, hello. Uh, my name is Grace Ann Thompson, and I was given Chapter 10, Superior and Subordinate Relationships in the Workplace, and I am doing it on the film Christopher Robin that we all had to watch. So, Christopher Robin is a heartworking, heartwarming family movie with a cute story, but it also has some important lessons on superior and subordinate relationships. So, the two characters I choose to focus on are Christopher Robin and Giles Winslow. Giles Winslow is the head guy that owns the company, Old Man Winslow. It's his son. So he's above Christopher Robin, but he isn't the head guy in the company. And they both treat their co-workers very differently. So Christopher Robin is his superior. So when he is first seen, Christopher Robin is walking into the building. And when we see him, he's saying good morning and until hello to all his fellow employees. They are giving a warm smile and waving back and saying good morning. Um, you see him, the first person he talks to is his assistant, Mrs. Dane. He calls her by name, so he knows her name, which is a good thing to point out. Um, so he's rapidly asking questions about what's going on today and what's uh, happening with the merchandise, and he's getting answers. And you can tell right away he knows what he's talking about. He's getting answers, but he's treating her with respect and being kind. Um, and he treats his coworkers with respect, even though he has more power with them. So he's the manager of this floor, but he's still very respectful and kind. Unlike... Giles Winslow as a superior. So when Giles Winslow enters the room, the mood changes and the co-workers all start standing up and their faces change to concern. So he kind of, when he walks in, you get the mood of like, oh no, the boss has entered the room, like who's going to get fired today? It's that like fear where if you've ever worked in a workplace, there's always that superior in an organization that everyone's a little scared to be around because you never know what he's going to say or do and he has too much power. So he says something like, I'd love to come down here and get my hands dirty every once in a while. So he's trying to pretend to be one of the guys. He makes jokes that nobody else laughs at. So he obviously doesn't have those inside markers. So Giles does not have value congruence. And what I mean by this, I will mention it later also, is that he values power and money, while the other workers, specifically Christopher Robin, are worried. They care about the company. They want it to do better. But they also really care about their families, which is something Giles does not have. He does not value that. So you can tell by the way he interacts with the group that he's lacking the inside markers his peers should have. So he, they don't laugh at his jokes. He doesn't get what they're talking about. Um, Giles makes a point to let him know if Christopher cannot find a solution to their problem about lowering costs, he might not have a job. So Giles tells him on Monday they're going to make a presentation about saving costs. And Christopher Robin better have a solution. Even though Christopher is like, wait, I'm supposed to spend this weekend with my daughter and my wife. It's a big deal. I finally get some family time. And he's like, nope, if you want to keep your job, you're going to have to come and work. And he even says, hey, I'm going to stay all uh, weekend and work with you. So Giles is teaching these lessons uh, about not being a good superior because even though he makes this promise, we find out later he was actually golfing all weekend. So Giles Winslow continued. So later in the movie, we see Giles again when Christopher Robin returns on Monday to the office to make his presentation. So when he gets there, Christopher Robin was with Winnie the Pooh and his friends, um, trying to help them out, and he leaves all this hard work he's done all weekend he had in like a folder, all these papers, and he left it behind. And so he's standing in front of the group, and he's trying to come up with what to say, because obviously he doesn't have any material, and the entire time, Giles is just in front of the entire company board, making fun of him. He's like, look at this crazy nutso, look, what is he pulling out of his bag? Nothing. Like, making fun of him to, like, the head boss and everyone else. Um, the way Giles speaks to Christopher in front of the board shows patterns of face-threatening acts and competitive conflict. Um, when Giles is asked to give a solution, we find out his solution is to just fire the entire, entire department of workers to save money. So he's like, let's just fire this group of people. That's a solution. Obviously, he doesn't care about these workers he spent time with. Um, and later on, we find out Giles has spent all weekend golfing instead of working like Christopher. So the, finally, the video clip I want to show you is at the very end of the movie when Christopher finally stands up to Giles. So he calls him a woozle, calling out his value and congruence. And we see the importance of spending time with family like Christopher does instead of Giles. So this is a really good clip. I hope you can hear it. Here. So that is all I have to show. Sorry the video quality wasn't great, but it was the best example I could find of that scene. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, reason I, part of the reason I chose this video is because Christopher Robin, I think, correctly shows how to confront someone in a workplace. Usually 
you wouldn't argue with someone that has more power of you, especially in front of a board, in front of everyone. And I think he does a good job of calling out Giles at the right time. And in the end, he does get to spend time with his family. So his work relationships works for him. And thank you. I hope everyone has a good summer. Bye.